Previously, we created the Traffic Eliminator, and in this episode, we'll have heavy development by adding a train line, tram route, some detailing, we also started but not finalized all four industries, and we will add high-density zoning to truly test the Traffic Eliminator. Greetings fellow mayors, this is Captain Obvious, and welcome back to Hilly Straight City. Alright, we're gonna pick up from where we left off, which was we unlocked the high density zoning. And our goal for this episode is to reach at least the next milestone of 7,500 so we can develop our uh, train station and establish our transportation uh, at least in this part of the city. But first, we need to like make sure that we pacify all the needs so right now we see a lot of garbage issues and we can we're gonna go ahead and check what other issues that we may need to fix well for instance electricity so i am going to go ahead and add in a new power plant the geothermal power plant we're just gonna put it right here so that will pacify that then we're gonna add a few more garbage facilities uh let's add in an incinerator plants so that this will empty out so again this area is temporary i have a plan of making a um, harbor in this area but for now uh, our focus is going to be here all right so we've added that and uh here i am going to create a a service facility uh for the city so for instance uh i'm going to create a road here and then this structure is the small pedestrian area service point so you need this building in order to uh able to create these roads which are pedestrian streets so that's why i have this and i'm going to create others here so such as the uh, tram tram depot so this is where all the trams will uh, emerge and then i am going to go ahead and transfer this down here oops wrong zone type okay we're gonna put it down here then we're also going to add all other necessary uh, facilities so for instance not a lot of people remember to add this thing which is the park maintenance building and this uh, has vehicles that travel around the city to boost the parks increasing their entertainment value and radius so this is important to help uh, you know improve these parks uh, all the uh, uh, park life DLCs all right so we have that there and uh, what other structure may, uh, will we need I am actually going to add another garbage facility uh, we will use the uh, eco-friendly incinerator plant we're gonna put it right over here so that we have a garbage a garbage facility that is much closer and we also need we also need a bus depot so i'm gonna place this over here and also we need some water so i'm just going to place water towers here okay and that is all that we need so that i don't have to like run around the city going back and forth uh okay i believe we've pacified everything uh so the garbage will be picked up eventually so we could go ahead and go times three speed uh so right now what we need are more residential and commercial so what i'm going to do is i'm going to dezone or uh yeah redevelop our low density area here and we're really gonna test out the traffic eliminator so let's go ahead and dezone and we are going to do selective zoning uh it's perfectly okay to dezone a large area especially if they're just low density but you you should not do that when it comes to high density buildings okay so selective zoning let's wait for all of this to kind of disappear all right selective zoning so what i want uh, specifically are four by four blocks i do not want to like for instance if i zone this entire area uh one could be four here and then this could be something else but uh it, it actually worked well uh turned out well because it did not choose to create anything there uh, i'm going to dezone this but i do not like this uh structure in particular actually i don't like them both so if you have a preference on buildings uh go ahead and keep them but if 
uh, for me uh, i'll explain why uh, in a moment let's go ahead and just uh, continue zoning okay so these guys i like and if i like them i will turn them historical and the reason why i like them is because they have a full side while while these ones here they have like parking lots on the sides and it and it's kind of rounded it doesn't fit the theme so this is why i dislike these types of buildings i would prefer uh these ones where, where where they are more squared but i also don't want them to be too tall so this is also why uh we are making them historical so that they will remain their current uh building model uh even though when they level up the reason why i want to keep them low is so that other buildings will be more prominent compared to these things because when they reach level five they could be extremely tall and it takes away the focus from the other structures uh the unique buildings that i want to be the focus of the area all right i'm uh with this i am also going to zone a few uh high density commercial and i'm going to choose specifically just a four by four area uh four by four area so we're gonna put one there put one here and i'm going to zone them apart so that uh they actually cause a lot of noise pollution so you don't want to zone them too close together okay i think i'm happy with these buildings uh we could possibly put one here well, everything else would be uh, high density residential. And I also do not want to zone anything on our roundabout. So I'm going to dezone these guys and only zone 4x4 four four here. So, other types of buildings that I don't like are the 2x2, uh, two two, and they create these the weird, uh, like, Tetris looking blocks uh, and I really don't like them so I would rather dezone them and have them build something else but as long as it's two by two it will always uh, come out to this so we what I can do is I could like delete and create a spacing so that it will be instantly four by four and hopefully it will just uh, construct one type or one building so you're gonna see some of them with a uh, space in between all right so this guy i noticed him level up to level two which is not something that i want but uh, it's already there uh so i should make this historical uh which i will do but i am going to be using a mod called historical districts so what what it does is everything within the district will become historical instantly so i don't have to click on each building and then click on the radio button to make it uh, historical so instead i'm going to use this set historical so now instantly everything is historical so if you play on console you you're gonna have to like manually uh make them historical the downside is if there's a building that i don't like i have to delete force delete it and then it's going to grow and then I have to do it again so yeah that is the only downside but it is tolerable all right let's go ahead and continue this side until we kind of balance this out uh, I'm going to be doing the same exact thing. Alright, so these are the police station and the firehouse. And I want to relocate them. I don't want to place them here. And we're going to use the... Uh, much larger ones we had these because they were cheaper but now that we definitely have more money in the bank we can go ahead and use a much uh, a much better uh, looking building Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with all the buildings that's uh, that that is uh, constructed here. So if we look at them, they're also pretty low. This guy is not one of them. So I'm going to delete that and we're going to wait for another building. But everything else, 
uh, seems pretty good. And we're going to do the same exact thing on uh, this side. And we are now a small city. We can add in a train station as planned. And we're also going to add in the other uh, stations such as a tram line that will be later in the episode. All right, so between uh, the spacing of one unit, I decided to put trees instead of uh, pedestrian paths because we actually have uh, too many of them and trees are actually pretty good. So if you look at it here, you notice that I, uh, I didn't zone uh, more buildings, but instead I'm making this look like a larger park that extends there. And I'm actually going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to make this appear like it extends a bit further however our residential demands dropped uh we have some commercial but we definitely have more industrial demand so we are going to shift our attention and create a actually we're going to develop all four industry types so from here you can see that we have uh ore oil uh fertile land for farming and then of course Forestry can be built anywhere as long as you plant trees. So let's go ahead and develop that. So I'm going to create a, a road going across. So this is the way to access this area. Here are a few examples of past industry layouts that I've created that are traffic efficient. But to get to this, we first need to unlock all the industry buildings. Uh, first, we're going to develop our oil industry and to do that, uh, especially for new players, you first need to put down or select that building. So we're going to go to oil industry and then you need the uh, uh, main building. But in order to have a main building, you need to paint in a zone area and make sure that it is the industrial zone type. And then from there, put down the main building and that should get you started. So you have the extractor and processing building. So let's go ahead and increase that area. We just need up to here. And then we're going to add in on the other side here so that we could add our uh, uh, processing buildings. Just a reminder, this will not be the final industry layout. I am simply completing requirements to unlock all the industry building. Then in a future episode, we can design a final layout. Okay, just a short recap or reminder on how this works is there are five levels for an industry and to reach the next level, you have to pacify the worker number count and also the produced uh, resource. To get more workers, you need more buildings. So for instance, uh, this, this facility has 70 workplaces and uh, there are two types of resources. There are the extractors, so you take out the oil and then you process it into petroleum or plastic right now plastic is not available what we currently have is petroleum with the oil sludge pyrosis plant so i think we have enough uh, workers and we just need to wait for this so but i'm going to plop down a few more so that we don't have to get back here that often my goal is just to uh, level up until we reach level five and now that we have that we still have a lot of industry demand so i'm going to go ahead and create the other uh industries so we are going to create the ore and it's going to be exactly the same process but with just different types of buildings but basically the same idea and i'm also going to do that with the other industry types Uh, so forestry is the last industry type that we did not uh, create uh, so 
the ore or the blue ground resource while the black one is the oil while the yellow or light green is the farming but in order to have uh so in the green ones are the forestry but the forestry is the only versatile one where you can actually create a forest area just by planting trees and instantly you can put down a, an extractor and that would instantly or work uh but if you don't have trees and you just plot it plop it down you're going to notice it's going to say not enough natural resources so you you need to make sure that you have trees uh on these areas Okay, so we have pretty much all the four types of industry, but you notice that we still have some demands. I'm going to try to make it flatline by adding more, but we are not going to over uh, create them. And there we go. We have level two and hopefully we'll be able to have all four industries in just this one episode, but we are not going to design it in this uh, moment in time. Well, we actually ran out of money. Wow, we burnt through 300k. Um, let's uh, make sure that these are priority roads and then we can get back to the city. Okay, we can leave up. Oh, as soon as they said we can leave them alone, they choose to level up. But we are actually going to ignore it and we're just going to get back to the city and start planning our, our train station. So, to... Um, the way I plan my uh, transportation line. So there are two types, which is I call the long distance uh, type of transportation, which have the most uh, capacity. So which includes trains, monorails and metro. And the way I uh, plop down each area or where I choose to place them, for instance. So if this is one block, one game tile, uh, you want to place a, a station like on the edge or at least one distance apart or one tile apart. So, so here's a better view. So let's say I have a station here. The next station should be around here. A lot of players I've seen create like a train station here. And then the next station is just there. This distance, this distance is too short. This can be pacified with a bus or a tram. And it's important to understand that because train stations are expensive and they do stack up over time. So this has an upkeep of 1000 and then there are different types of stations that may be much more expensive. Either way, the, the cost will increase uh, significantly. So it is much better to create stations uh, much more efficiently by having m more distance between them. All right. So with that said, I am going to create a station here. And the plan is we are going to unlock. Uh, so we have three and we have nine tiles total. I'm going to unlock this four, five. Uh, this I need to unlock in order to access this area. Unfortunately, we have this really large area that is uh, it's just nothing there. And uh, so this two, four, five and then six, seven eight and then the ninth tile will most likely be here or somewhere but at least we have eight tiles planned we are, with that said so a station here uh we're gonna have one that goes across and we're gonna have a station somewhere here and this area here by the way again these are all temporary especially this what i plan to do with this area will be a harbor and we're going to have a station going there so workers can get there much more quickly. And then we're going to develop this area into residential commercial. And everything here will be basically all our uh, in industrial areas. And then here will be more residential commercial and whatnot. All right, let's go ahead and create our train station. And it seems like I missed to hit that uh, historical uh, button. So some of them have leveled up, which is not what I wanted. So some of them are level two. So you notice some of them are taller. So I'm going to stop that immediately before they grow any taller. So I can't like change it now. Um, yeah, we're just going to have to remember that. Uh, I am going to unlock this tile. 
so I can gain access here and I am going to create more blocks okay so this should be exactly parallel there however I do not plan to continue this uh, as much as possible when it comes to curves I try not to this this looks awkward for me I would rather have uh, zoned areas uh, on on a square or rectangular blocks so this is the issue again with the the historical uh, button district so if something abandons you have to manually delete them and that actually should not be zonable okay all right so now we have we have disconnected and i'm going to put a station here uh, a lot of players uh what they prefer to do is create their road uh, layout and then put in their structures but uh, my design choice or my style is to actually first create the your center point which is okay so we are leveled up i'm just going to ignore this uh create our center point based on the station so i'm going to zoom out a bit and i'm going to compute where our station is going to go uh we're going to put it here then we're going to be using uh this station so this is the elevated dual island platform station which has a bypass track which is very important so that trains will not like you won't have uh, train traffic basically and it's also elevated uh, which is necessary so that they can go over this uh this canal or river all right so uh, as i said i do not like this so i am actually going to delete it so we're going to redo this area then i am going to rezone so these have no specific uh specialization i'm going to create a new zone area and we are going to make this into local and organic produce so we click on commercial specialization and then organic and local and organic produce and it, you have this little icon there so any commercial here for instance these guys so they are going to dezone and then they are going to regrow and they are going to be the uh, local local and organic produce uh, building type which is much shorter in height and that is exactly what i want for this area okay so we have a train station uh, set up and let's see we kind of want to connect it here And then in the uh, front of it, I usually have a center point or a, uh, a main focus of the area. So first we're going to create our front. Or actually we're, we're going to decide on like a small park right in the middle. So you're going to have to imagine coming in by train. And then the first thing uh, you want to see is something like a, a unique building that is, you know, it will give a purpose for coming to this station so first let's add in a uh, kind of a front building here's an example from second season fisher enclave city notice how in front of the monorail station you can clearly see the london eye so i first placed down the monorail station then built around it with unique buildings so we can better appreciate the architecture We'll just take a short tour, a little break from building. Then across the river, we are about to reach the amusement park island. And here, notice how I placed all the amusement park assets right in front of the station. Again, so we can better appreciate the building models. And in the back is the Chirpy Castle, which makes for an excellent background. So I don't just place buildings or roads just anywhere. In this channel, we don't build roads. We create a journey. And on our final stop of the mini tour is going to the Eiffel Tower. This is actually a vanilla recreation or reimagining of the Eiffel Tower and the garden in front of it. So when we zoom out, that is how it looks like and overall what you can expect in this new season more or less. Then we're going to add a larger building. So I'm going to choose the, this, the Grand Mall, which is probably my favorite uh, unique building. Uh, but if you put it down, it has a weird, like, front. This is the front of the building, and it does not look anything special. Uh, so what I like to, or what I prefer to do is turn it on its side. 
so when we look at it that is a much better view so you get to see the uh the balcony here and there's actually a hole that goes right through so i like this because of its you know unique building style it's not a square it's it's kind of rounded and yeah it has a hole right in the middle and it, it's also not that expensive it's only 1200 uh, weekly income and all right so we got that there and let's add more things so it's creating cracks and i'm trying to fix it uh the reason why it's creating cracks is because it's finding uh, areas here so i'm gonna you're gonna see me redo things so that these uh create the right type of uh buildings okay there you go so now there are no cracks and I'm going to create like a parking lot there. So this is exactly what I'm waiting for, which is the uh, Edison hypercharger and so we're, we're gonna create like a mini parking lot here but uh and to do that you just have to keep deleting uh if you're playing on console and it's gonna be extremely tedious waiting for that uh so what i'm going to do just to save time is i am going to use a mod and just put down the actual building that i need instantly oh you know what wow okay that's on the wrong angle, but basically this is exactly what I wanted. Oh, that's cool. Uh, let's go ahead and add in the others. Wow, it seems like I didn't need it. Oops, I spoke too soon. Okay, so I might as well just use the mod then. Okay, so we created our center point here, which is like a large park. And this is how I prefer to do things when it comes to like curved areas. So this side, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, continue our generic uh, high density zoning, uh, which would really test out the traffic eliminator. Uh, actually, we haven't checked the traffic flow. We're at 93. However, we only have 11,000 population. So that's nothing to be too excited about. Um, it's when the population grows and we're gonna truly see if this can uh you know sustain but of course you want to help it out that this is exactly why we are creating transportation lines so that it, it's not all purely vehicles all right let me uh zone this and we're gonna go ahead and continue our train line and we are now a big city wow uh, okay, so the city is really growing. So we're just going to continue and, uh, you know, wait for all of this to zone in. I noticed that we all, we don't have residential demands. Uh, we need more commercial and that will be developed in this area. But for now, I'm going to watch this until I have the right buildings. Then we are going to move on.
Okay, so now it seems that we have a, a bit of a death wave going on. So let's slow down time. And we need to establish more cemeteries and we need to put down some crematoriums. So let's go ahead and add those. So we're just going to like scatter them throughout the city. Uh, as much as possible, you want to pair a uh, crematorium with a cemetery. Uh, hopefully that would be enough. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, while we're waiting, we are going to create our train line. But uh, so we need to create our um, our key here. And uh, as much as possible, we first need to check the height of your current terrain and you want only up to three levels from the uh, water so if this is one so we're gonna start one two three so this is the height that you want uh you could go up to four four is safe so we're gonna increase the brush size so i'm going to right click uh here on this terrain and then we're gonna use this as our marker so now when I create a key, it's going to be low enough so that when we add a, uh, let's say when we add a ferry, it's going to be slightly low enough or low enough for the uh, ferries to get on. And it doesn't look too awkward where it's uh, immensely too high. This, this actually seems still a little too high. So we need to lower it down uh, one more. So uh, again, so this is from here, one, two, three. So actually it's four. So we, we need exactly three. So we need to lower it down a bit more. So around here. So we're just going to do it again. So this looks definitely much more acceptable. So I'm going to do that all throughout, at least on this side and some here. Uh, it's best to do this early so that it doesn't create, uh, I mean, it's going to flood. It's definitely going to flood, but at least it, it's going to be a minimal amount of flood if you do it early. Uh, if you develop this area with uh, zoning, you know, of course, the residents will not be too happy about that. And here's the flooding that I mentioned. Uh, we probably should add a water pump station. Oh, something that I missed to mention. So even though we have the, the same exact exact height for everything down here, as you go up uphill, uh, the, the level is actually going to change. So as you can see, the water occasionally goes through this so that if you look at the number, it's actually less. So we need to increase this by one level. So I'm going to right click there so that we can add here. So it's a little more balanced. Okay, so right now we are not going to pay attention too much on this side of the map. We are mostly going to focus the development here. So try to ignore this area. Hey, we have level five oil and I actually didn't put that many uh, things there, but that's a good thing. At least uh, hopefully the others would follow the same and just level up without us having to do any more things. All right, let's do the train line. Hopefully it will allow me to. Uh, we have some water in the terrain that might be a problem. So I plan to have a ferry line somewhere here and then here we're going to have a like low density residential. So we're going to have a ferry line here uh, and then another one on this end. So this needs to have a lot of uh, headroom for the ferry to pass through.
okay that looks like that is enough uh but if we need to we can use move it mod of course that is in our disposal but i'm just trying to you know make it uh so that uh console players can follow but i think they would understand And we are 15,000 population. I don't know how much population we could have in just this small area. So I have something weird that's happening here. I think it's the terrain. Yes, it is definitely the terrain. I missed to smooth this out. Then from here, I actually want to add a harbor, but we need 24,000 population and I don't think we're going to achieve that in this episode, but I will prepare like the, at least the road layout and we're going to keep in mind that there's going to be a ferry stop here, or actually we could probably just use this for the meantime as a uh, kind of like a guide. So we know that it's going to be here. All right. So I'm going to plop this down. So we have all of this as the local and organic produce but i am actually going to introduce another zone type so we are going to de zone or actually create a new zone over here make sure that we are on the paint district type uh we're gonna go on this side and then we are actually going to use the tourism specialization so this gets confusing. You, you can see that there are different paint styles. I probably should clean it up. Oh, hey, would you look at that? We finally have traffic at 15,000 population. We our traffic flow is now at 85, 86%. But notice how the traffic is on this side, not necessarily here. So therefore, this is still operational and it is functioning as intended. And this, this is very easy to analyze on why this is happening. Uh, so for one thing, we have all four industry types 
on this side of the map and we also have generic industries that is a lot of trucks and there are only two things that these guys want to do one is either to deliver goods to the commercial areas here or they want to export and in order to do that they have to go through this interchange so to reduce a lot of this uh, shenanigans we we're gonna do a couple of things but one that is absolutely necessary is to create their own interchange so i'm going to create an interchange here but this is already a lot to ask for just one or just the second episode in the series so what i'm going to do is we are just going to use the uh, generic uh clover leaf that is available for all players and this is going to be temporary as much as everything here is already temporary uh so i hope you don't mind we're just going to use this for now and in a future episode we are definitely going to update this so i am going to connect this and then we are going to further reduce the traffic okay so we have everything connected and with that uh being there this becomes redundant because we don't want the trucks to be traveling here when they really want to go there and if they intend to just go here then that's when they will have to take this turn so we are gonna go ahead and delete this bridge uh, let's make sure that we have the things turned on at the right places okay that looks good and all right so the next step is to deal with the traffic on this side uh first i am going to upgrade the roads uh so we're gonna convert it to six lane uh for now i'm just gonna use this and also remove parking at the same time uh, i could change it to a uh uh six lane road with bus tracks but i'm, I'm not, i haven't really planned that yet so for now i'm just gonna use this one Okay, and next is this. Uh, we don't necessarily want them to be taking this side. Uh, as much as possible, we want them to go through here and exit immediately here. So this is causing a crisscross. And yeah, this is not ideal. So I'm going to make this into a one-way. And with that said, let's go ahead and upgrade these roads so they will have four lanes. And that should also help improve the uh, traffic flow and uh the other thing that i want to do is so we have this uh tram tram line but we haven't actually connected it so we are going to do that now uh i am going to create a bridge going across so we're going to go ahead and delete this and i'm actually going to choose the pedestrian street with tram tracks uh, i like these because they are much thicker than just the regular tram tracks and since this is broken, uh, this will be our new exit. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, create our, you know, a, a complete loop around for our tram. Oh, you know, one thing I forgot to do again is to hit this uh, uh, historical because some of them have grown more than I would, would have liked. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and then we are going to create our uh, tram line. Okay, so we have created our tram loop and now it's a matter of deciding where the tram stops will be. Alright, so the entire idea, ooh, we forgot to upgrade this one. Okay, so the tram, tram loop is what I consider to be, uh, I need to upgrade this uh, after. Uh, I consider this to be the, uh, the within the tile mode of transportation so the the long distance ones are trains uh monorail and metro so they go from tile to tile while buses and uh, trams are within the same tile and their purpose is to like gather all the uh, citizens or the the sims around within the same tile and you want to kind of filter them into your train station so that is the general idea so I will create a stop here.
okay so we created our first loop and the second loop i don't necessarily need to make it like right across we can do it in between on like a, a different location so i'm gonna put one here Okay, there we are. We there is our tram loop. You know, one thing I missed to do was to like decide on the type of tram. Uh, let's go for uh, this one, the most capacity, and that will be the same for the other tram route or tram line. Actually, let's use a different one. Uh, let's go for this one thirty, and then we can change their color. Oh, okay, all right. So that's going to take a while to like get in in their uh, respective routes. So there's going to be some traffic uh, here, uh, especially when it's going through. Uh, let's make sure we have our stops. OK, let's uh, it's been a while now. Let's check the traffic flow. So we are back at 91. Uh, we have some tram traffic here, which is expected because all the trams are just uh, emerging so we're gonna have to wait for that and uh, while that is happening i'm going to go ahead and like fulfill all the requirements for these uh, in industries to reach level five so we have pretty much uh, enough produced resources we just need more workers uh, therefore we just need more buildings so that they will have more workers so that same goes for this so i'm just going to like plop down you know multiple buildings Okay, I think we've added more than what we can um, because you still, despite the fact that I want to like add more buildings, you have to follow the demands of the city. So this is just to prevent uh, imbalance. Uh, otherwise, some citizens will start to complain and abandon. So we're going to stop all of that and let's uh, look around the city and we're going to try to add one more thing uh which is so we're gonna prepare by adding a high capacity university so i'm just gonna put it here okay i think we've covered a lot just for episode two again the industrial area will be redesigned i just find it futile to design something then redesign it when there's a new unlocked building available in any case, if you enjoyed the build and the progress that we have in just one episode and are looking for more educational city management while maintaining an aesthetically pleasant design, hit that subscribe button and comment down below on what you like about the build. This is Captain Obvious. Thank you for watching and for choosing to fly with Obvious Airlines. Have a great day and I will see you in the next flight.